Hey everybody, it's Brian with Team Aquascape. It is December 31st, so perfect time for me to say, hey, happy holidays. Thank you guys so much for joining us today, the entire year, taking time out of your busy schedule. I know so many of you guys have probably New Year's Eve parties that are happening, so thank you, thank you, thank you. You guys, this is gonna be an awesome episode. One, it's gonna be kind of a recap of what the crazy year was like. Two, and most importantly, at the end of this, we're gonna be sharing with you guys some really, really exciting news. So hang on tight, let's start that trip down memory lane here we go we are going to build a pondless waterfall the best way to learn anything is to teach it we are rocking and rolling on this pond So I guess the most shocking thing to me is how fast the year goes by. It seems like the more stuff you cram in your life, the faster and the faster and the faster the years go, especially with kids and work and responsibilities and everything else. So in a blink of an eye, I'm sitting here December 31st, and it's kind of fun to take the trip down memory lane because if I didn't, it'd be easy to forget some of the cool, cool things that happened this year. First, let's start off with our clean out season. And man, was it a crazy clean out season. Well over 300 150 some cleanouts, tons of different packages. We collaborated with CACs from all over the country to help us actually get all of these cleanouts done. It was a crazy time of year. And if you remember, that cleanout season is our most important time of year because it's helping to get all of our customers' features up and running for the next season. And they want everything done at the exact same time. So it's all hands on deck. And it is a crazy time of year just trying to get all that stuff done so people can enjoy that Aquascape lifestyle. This this year the maintenance guys did a fantastic job. I think it was like $840,000 worth of maintenance packages. Those packages include their spring clean out, their routine maintenance, whether that was weekly or monthly or bi-monthly to nettings and fall shutdowns. But they totaled 1.4 million in actual sales, which includes some small little projects they did. I don't know if you remember Chris doing some wetland filters on existing ponds, doing some skimmer rehabs, some resealings, some pond facelifts, adding new liners, all different types of stuff those guys were doing. Things our maintenance crew tries to tackle are smaller projects. Not necessarily simpler projects, but smaller projects. Things that don't require a four or five guy crew like construction has. So the maintenance guys knocked it out of the park, way to go. Construction had a pretty good year too. I wouldn't say it was our best year ever. In fact, dollar wise, it looks like the worst. Generally construction falls around 1.1 to 1.4 million someplace in there. This year we did a little over 850, but we did 850 in the shortest amount of time ever. This year we didn't start till July. We had 30 days off due to vacations and holidays and some other miscellaneous things. So we lost 30 days of work just for some decisions we made last year. We lost a little bit of work in May because clean because cleanouts took so much longer, but we gained a little towards the end of the year where we got to work through most of December. So construction did that 850,000. We also did it with the smallest crew we've ever had in the past. Last year, we did 1.6 million, but we also worked with CACs across the country and we were trying to get two years of pre-sold projects done in one year. This year, we only did 14 projects, but we did some large projects. And if I can think all the way back to that very first project we did, good old Brad. Brad was our first project of the year and probably our smallest project of the year. If you remember, it was our smallest bass pond to date. Brad was so destined, so like focused on being able to put game fish in his pond. And sure enough, he did. He added some little bass in there. I think he added some small little perch. I check in with Brad here and there and he is loving his pond. He says, like so many of our customers have huge financial commitment, but best decision they've ever made for their house. Because it changes the way Brad uses not just his house, but the outside side of his house. And every single morning, he's sitting out there with his coffee. When he comes home from work, he's sitting out there with a glass of wine or a beer, just sitting by his pond watching his bass. Really, really cool. When I try to think of some other projects that really stand out, how could we not think about the Camisa project? What an awesome project. And to this date, and to this date, probably the longest time I've ever personally been on a residential project. We were out there for a little over 40 days straight. It was a project that I was really, really proud 
proud of. Very rarely do I get a customer that just allows us free access to the yard and Brian, do whatever you wanna do. And not just whatever you wanna do with the water feature, but design the different spaces. So the camisas really allowed me to kind of set up outdoor living areas they were gonna do from sunken patios to other sitting areas that kind of intercept the stream to where bridges are gonna go to lead to decks that were gonna lead to cold plunges, which is really the rec pond part, all falling into a 3,000 gallon rainwater harvesting system. Like, it was just such a cool project and an incredible people to build it for too. They just, every day, their jaws are on the floor of complete amazement, whether we were setting one rock in a day or we were gonna set 20 rocks in a day. They were just so, so floored by what we were all coming up with. And they allowed us to be creative. They didn't really give us too much direction and we got to do some really, really cool stuff out there. Make sure you follow us on other social media platforms because I'm gonna go out, I think this Friday, and check in with the Camisas and see what that project looks like. I know he's using it daily for that cold plunge. I don't know why that's fun to jump in 33 degree water, but he enjoys it, so more power to him. Other projects that really stand out to me. They all do, they really do. And, and one thing the owner of Aquascape, Greg the Pond Guy, always teases me about is, Brian, you said this is gonna be your favorite. And it's because it is. Literally every time I start a new project, it's my favorite project. I love creating and building and coming up with new concepts and doing stuff. Speaking of that, let's talk about really the very first project we did this year before Brad Nelson's was the Aqua Gardens. I got the okay to level the entire Aqua Gardens and come up with some different new ideas. We built a really, really cool koi pond completely out of our stack slate walls with a wetland filter and circulation and an intake bay and we got to landscape it. We built a super cool little pondless waterfall out of like seven rocks and it's, I think it's most people's favorite thing in the back. People even enjoy that small pondless waterfall than our big rec pond back there. We got a chance to work with some of the new fire rocks, the basalt columns, and set those things up. We did a display of, I think, 12 of those things. I think there was nine and then three with some fire that came off on the side. Changed some pathways, added some landscape, et cetera, et cetera. Spruced up our pergola area. It was just a great way to kind of kick the dust off the boots and get into our new season. Another project that stands out. Oh, how can we not forget the heron proof pond? So every year, the number one question we get, well, the top two questions we get are what do you do with the fish in the winter and what about predators? And so to answer, just for you guys viewing right now, what do we do with fish in the winter? They stay in there all winter long. There's all kinds of videos to explain this. I'm not gonna get into that with you right now, but they go into a state of hibernation. Fish basically just go to sleep for the winter. The second most common question we get is what about predators? We never ever lose fish to raccoons because raccoons simply can't swim, dive down and catch the fish. We will lose fish a lot of times to great blue herons and egrets and birds of prey. Uh, not so many eagles and hawks and stuff like that, but definitely great blue herons and egrets. And so what we tried to do is create more of a heron proof pond with just going deep with the whole thing. Keeping the whole thing a minimum of three feet deep, lots of circulation, a lot of agitation on the surface so those birds can't see through the water, the depth so the birds can't walk through the water because what I've noticed in nature is those herons won't walk in three feet of water. They just can't get out there. Mother Nature gave those birds some long legs, but not three feet long. So if we keep the pond deep, add some circulation, distort the water, it really gives those fish more of a fighting chance to survive and get away from those great big birds. That project was awesome. What's another one? Well, we had some fountainscapes in there. What I love about those fountainscapes is how much it can transform a pretty simple, boring space, whether it's your front yard or your backyard into something that nobody else has seen before. And every time we add a fountainscape, that's exactly what happens. We also got the opportunity to landscape a lot of projects this year. It was definitely one of our focuses. We wanted to add as much plant material as we could through different projects. So not only did we get to landscape the largest project that we put in this year, we got to assist with the landscape on the largest project we did this year. We also got to landscape that fountain feature. We got to landscape the back of Aquascape. We got to help with the placement of plants with several projects throughout the year. It was just a lot of fun. Next year, count my words, we're gonna try to landscape 100% of the projects that we put in because to me, the landscape is the final touches. It's what brings the whole thing together. And after 30 years of doing this, we have a pretty good idea of what plants work really well around water and which plants work perfect uh, without having to worry about splitting and dividing and overtaking different areas. So we're gonna talk a lot about that next year, the landscaping, because it can save a pond as much as it can ruin a pond.
Oh, I got a good one for you. How about that wedding pond? The wedding pond was not just fun, it was like such an awesome couple. And if you can't remember, check out the links below because all of these projects are gonna be set in the links below where you guys can come back and check these things out. In fact, take your entire New Year's holiday vacation and check out all the old Team Aquascape vlogs because they're so much fun to watch. But that wedding pond, it wasn't that they got married by the pond, it was that they chose instead of having a big formal reception and taking all the money and the time that would go into coordinating a giant reception like that, they said, why don't we take that money and put it into our backyard where we can get way more use out of it. And believe me, they are. They absolutely love their pond. Literally tears of joy down both of their faces. There's usually always one person that wants it more than the other. Not in this case. They both fell in love with this pond. Love, love building water features for super cool people. And you guys are the coolest. And then how about that last project of the year, right? We thought we were gonna be done in November and weather just allowed us to keep going and going and going. So we tried to tackle one more big project out in the southern part of Wisconsin, Beloit, Wisconsin to be exact. And weather just kept participating with us. So we kept going. We said, well, we'll get one more week. Ah, we'll get one more week. Ah, we'll get one more week. Well, they started off with Chris just out there digging by himself. I think Chris and I actually went out there, started digging. Chris kind of finished some things up. Keith from Arizona came out. Keith was a huge hand with Ed and Chris who then tackled rocking in 95% of the pond. I got out there, got to help a little bit with placing kind of the reservoir, rocking in some of that stuff. And then Chris and Jack and the rest of the team really finished up whatever they could. They got the plumbing done. They got some of their urns done. They got it set up. So now this time of year, New Year's Eve, they get to look at something, right? Instead of it just being a big giant muddy mess out there, we were able to get those urns running for them. Guarantee they're looking at some of those ice castle formations, which is why we try to set up water features running in the winter. They knew how important it was to have something running in the winter, I knew how important it was, especially with the way their house sat with all those windows looking towards their backyard, being able to see that ice evolve on a daily basis, whether it's getting icier, more ice castle looking, or it's getting warmer and it's starting to melt, that ice is always transforming every single day. And the way we left the lights on it, now that ice is a big glowing chunk of ice at night. So it just looks spectacular. So lots and lots of cool projects this year. I can't tell you one was better than the other. What I love most about my job is everyone is so unique. So I can get equally as excited about a one day feature as I can about a 40 day feature. And next year, I tell you what, definitely gonna build some of my favorite projects of all time. We've got all kinds of stuff going on next year. So we did 14 projects this year. Out of those 14 different projects, five of those were pond rehabs. Pond rehabs are where we come in, we demo whatever was existing in their backyard and completely give them a new water feature. And it's always so exciting because it, yeah, it's giving birth to a new waterfall, right? So those are fun. The other nine would have been a combination of, I think five of those were ponds, just brand new ecosystem ponds. Two of those were pondless waterfalls. One was a rec pond with rainwater harvesting and another one was a fountainscape. So 14 total projects, not bad. So how could we not forget about all the other things we did outside of Team Aquascape's 25 mile radius here that we traditionally work in? We did certified Aquascape contractor collaboration type builds. These included things like Urban Rescue Ranch, Garden Answers, which was so much fun to work with Laura out there at Garden Answers and get to understand what was going on in her brain and share what was going on with my brain and we just gelled so well together. White House on the Hill, taking us all over the country once again. And that was just kind of the tip of the iceberg. We also did nine different regional events where contractors came in from all over the country to help us build some extraordinary extraordinary ponds where we got to go to cool places like Puerto Rico and build a awesome fountainscape for an orphanage out there. And we did it like in a record amount of time, which then led us to travel around Puerto Rico and discover and play in more and different types of natural waterfalls where we get more inspiration to use for everybody else across the world. We got to go to Adrian Grenier's. We got to go to Rusty Reed. We got to go, well, and I say we got to go. This is really Ed and Chris and Jack and some other people from Team Aqua. 
landscape, but primarily Ed and Chris and Jack. But those guys got to go out to Rusty Reeds and build him a cool swim pond. Chris got to go out to British Columbia and build a pond with Diego and the guys out there, Brian Barchex. Brian Barchex out in Michigan, where we donated $125,000 worth of product in front of his new, soon to open aquarium, kind of interactive aquarium for the public to kind of come in and just connect with nature and lizards and fish and wildlife. It's gonna be a pretty awesome place for a really, really special guy. Tana Serpa, Central Florida Zoo, Utah Monium, where we got to do something at the Waldorf Astoria, and last but not least, Bama Bass. And I wasn't part of that, but if you guys haven't seen that video, make sure you check out those links below because I was watching the video and it's awesome. Like it's a super, super cool project. And how could it not be with the group of people that were out there, Ed leading the charge, aqua blue boulders, and a super cool guy. Like just, I can't wait to meet that guy in person someday, but it's amazing. The amount of stuff that Team Aquascape, Aquascape, this entire company takes on every single year. And next year is gonna be even more. And so I guess I, I don't know how this slips my mind, but just because uh, it's not that big of a deal. It was just Shaquille O'Neal, right? <laughs> and if you don't know who Shaquille O'Neal is, you live underneath a rock someplace. And it's not a small rock, it's a big giant rock you live underneath. But yes, this was Shaquille O'Neal's Shaq's 2.0, where Team Aquascape, and again, a collaboration of certified Aquascape contractors across the country came together to fix a horribly built pond. And so we built them a pond, pond with a really cool waterfall a few years back. We came in this year, really as superheroes to come fix his terribly built pond. And they didn't just fix it, they completely redesigned it and gave him something that I've heard Jack say, hey Greg, anything you ever want, I'm here for you. Because he was so, so impressed with what Greg and the rest of Certified Aquascape Contractor Network put together for him. What a really cool build, what an awesome experience. So yeah, a lot of stuff in one year. We definitely try to cram as much stuff as we possibly can into that bag every single year. And every single year we say, gosh, we're just taking on way too much. But at the end of the year, somehow we pull it off. And I don't know how, but we do. And so next year, are you guys ready for the exciting news? All right, here it is. There's so many different things happening again. Maybe not quite as busy as last year, just a different type of busy. We're gonna start with some of the collaboration builds we're gonna be doing. We have three major collaborations. One is with Stanley, the Dirt Monkey. They're going out, building him a cool rec pond. He's been waiting patiently, I think for over two years for this thing. So you know, as time goes on, on, designs evolve and change and everything else and we can't wait to share with you guys kind of where that started and where it's gonna come to and how it's gonna finish so that's gonna be our first collaboration of the year then later in the year we're gonna go out to Daniel and his wife DJ's house where we sit down with him and their children their their whole family and we do something with the arms family homestead such an awesome family we can't wait to give them a rec pond that the whole family can enjoy I've been working with Daniel and his wife DJ for quite quite some time now. We're coming up with some really cool designs. We're gonna show you the whole design process, how we go through all that, how we draw it all out, and how we take what's on paper and put it into a, a giant, really cool swim pond. And then third but not least, our good friends Aaron and Laura from Garden Answers. We're going back out to Idaho, we're gonna build an add-on feature to a pond we built this year, and we're gonna call it the Dream Stream. So we have a good 50 foot to 100 foot stream we're gonna be putting together with some of the most talented artists of the year and we're gonna try to get the whole thing done in two days. So three great builds. We've got Pondemonium this year coming on. Every year we kind of bring Pondemonium to Aqualand or we do it online. This year we did it online. This year it's gonna be back in person here at Aqualand. When it's at Aqualand, things get crazy. We're talking about having a pretty epic waterfall building competition. We've got some other big builds kind of in the works, a lot of training going going on, unbelievable pond tour, some great guest speakers. It's gonna be about 600 to 800, maybe even up to a thousand like-minded artists all together in one place for an awesome three-day training event. What else, what else, what else? We've already got about $350,000 with the project sold for next year, so we're well on our way, which takes me into a little bit, how are things gonna go next year for this channel? And things are gonna be a little different. I guess the easiest way for me to explain it is no longer is our channel gonna be dictated by the schedule. So no longer are we creating content based off of our schedule. Where in the past, 
past. Now, if we go back like two years ago, we used to do a video every three days. We had Monday, I think Wednesday and Sunday. This year, we simplified things to just Sunday. This year, hopefully this doesn't bother you guys too much. We're gonna go to maybe only once, more than likely, twice a month. Ah, I get it. Instead of it being a bad thing, you gotta think of it as a good thing. We're gonna be so much more hyper-focused on creating great content. And what does that mean? That means a lot more interviews with the customer. That means a lot more walkthrough in the design process with myself. That means a lot more technical stuff with Ed and Chris and myself and Jack, really digging deep into the explanation on why we do things, not just how we do things. We wanna take you through that before and after phase in one video. So instead of it being a two part, three part, four part, or sometimes even a five part series, it'll always just be a one part. So if we've got a project that lasts a month, guess what guys, you're gonna get one video a month. But instead of the schedule creating the content, the content is gonna create the schedule just with a lot more detail. So hopefully those boos just went into, yay, Team was came. So like I said, we have a few hundred thousand dollars with the sold projects for next year. We're looking to get about another $800,000 dollars more I'd really like to get above that million dollar mark 1.1 1.2 anything higher yay for team aquascape how are we gonna do that when it's really just a, a small crew that we have I'm gonna have to lean on some certified aquascape contractors but we're gonna have to bring in some other people here and there to help us run these different projects especially as we're traveling and doing things like stuff for arms family homestead and Laura from garden answer and Stanley from dirt monkey every time we do that kind of stuff it takes from our schedule, which means we can't be building here locally. We're looking for that maintenance team to stay pretty even, kind of hard for them to go much higher than that 1.4, so we're hoping they stay right around that 1.4, but it's gonna be a busy year, and we've got a great group of people. Team Aquascape is always evolving. In fact, you guys want a cool, kick-ass job? Apply for Team Aquascape. Uh, we're always hiring. If you think building ponds is in your future, come join us. Like, it's so much fun out there. I'm not saying it's the easiest of jobs, but it is a ton of fun. You guys, what a crazy year. As crazy it is as it is, I love the craziness. I can't wait for next year. Next year is gonna be full of crazy, full of some changes with that new vlog format. Really excited about that. Looking forward to your comments and stuff. And you guys, as you comment, another thing we're gonna do, we're gonna really try to reply to more of those comments. So we're gonna listen to those comments. And if you guys are asking for stuff, we're really gonna try to give it to you. So you guys, please keep commenting. Like, comment, share, subscribe. You know what to do. You guys, we'll see you soon. You guys, happy New Year's. Thank you so much for joining us here at Team Aquascape. We'll see you next year. Bye.